Professor May, thanks for joining me and welcome to this program. Thank you very much for having me. Well, just to start with today, mostly we'll discuss about the HR 6600 and uh, SC199 draft bill that the United States of America proposing to sanction Ethiopia. And what do you know about the sanctions and the impact that would have on the country? Uh, good morning and afternoon. I think you have to look at the fact that you have in the House of Representatives, H.R. 6600 has passed the House Foreign Relations Committee, but it's a resolution. H.R. stands for House Resolution. In the Senate, you have S3199, which was voted out of committee last Tuesday. Now that is more serious because it's an actual bill. That is, it's legislation, which is a more uh, to, to, is, is more effective than a resolution. So both these bills are sitting there. As I said, one's a resolution, one would actually become law. And it's up to the Democratic Party because they control the House and the Senate and President Biden, if these bills will be passed and signed. If they are, they would represent uh, the most severe, harsh sanctions against the Ethiopian people. They would deprive, uh, they would essentially assert that Ethiopia has lost its sovereignty and that the United States can impose through their own investigations and other means measures of sanctions against Ethiopia if Ethiopia does not produce the results and conduct their investigations the way that the U.S. wants. So this is uh, this would include uh, withdrawing uh, USA ID money, this would be, uh, also lack of development money, this would put pressure on the international financial institutions not to lend money to Ethiopia. It would be a full-scale effort to disrupt the Ethiopian economy, to drive more people into poverty, and therefore destabilize Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa. And if you listen to the comments of Senator Coons after the passage on Tuesday in the Senate of S3199, he was very explicit. He said, I voted for this bill. I hope we don't have to use it. But if Ethiopia doesn't do what we want, if we don't get the results we want, then we have this ready to use against them. There could not be a more explicit purpose of these bills than what Chris Coons says. And Chris Coons is the closest ally in the United States Senate to President Biden. And therefore, President Biden and the US State Department are aware of these bills and will use them as threats against the Ethiopian people and against the prime minister if they do not do what the U.S. tells them. Good. The GPL is officially admitted that they started the war in Tigray, but the U.S. or the United States of uh, the current uh, leadership of Biden government did not want to believe that uh, it's repeatedly accused the Ethiopian government for inciting this conflict. Even the, his HR or this HR 6600 and the S1 city uh, 199 sanction doesn't target the terrorist TPLF group. What does this one sided approach for the US government show? It's very obvious that from the very beginning of the conflict, uh, going back uh, a year and a half ago, that the United States government was out to undermine the leadership of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali and to weaken the nation state of Ethiopia because all of the actions and all of the propaganda from the news organizations and the comments by Secretary of State Blinken, Anthony Blinken, all focused on allegations against the Ethiopian government. They, uh, Blinken discussed genocide in Tigray which it has never been proven. He discussed using sex as a weapon by the Ethiopian government in Tigray. That was refuted by the United Nations. There were claims of ethnic cleansing, which were never proven. This was, uh, again, early on in, in 2021. 
And therefore, it was very clear uh, at that point that the United States government, the administration of Joe Biden, the United States State Department, the U.S. Congress, were all coordinated moves to weaken the government of Ethiopia. Why? Because in the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia is the most significant political nation. And to control the Horn of Africa, you have to have a leadership in Ethiopia that will be compliant with the geopolitical demands of the West. And the West geopolitical demands include control of the waterways from the Indian Ocean to the Gulf of Eden to the Red Sea to the Suez Canal. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has been independent minded and a nationalist leader and is trying to coordinate activity with Eritrea and Somalia. And from the standpoint of the geopolitical faction, which insists they must be in control and countries must submit to their, their control, the actions of the prime minister, they consider dangerous. They want to continue ethnicity. They want to use ethnicity as a vehicle to weaken the centralized government in Addis Ababa. And that's why I believe they will push for inclusion of the TPLF in some form in a future government of Ethiopia. And they will not oppose ethnicity and they will not promote economic development. And I think if you look at these two bills, they are draconian, harsh, they only hurt the people of Ethiopia and they do nothing to promote peace, prosperity and stability, which they claim. And I hope that the people in Ethiopia and the government in Addis Ababa understands that the government of the United States and the Congress will not relent. There will be continued pressure, propaganda, investigations, allegations against the government, against the prime minister. The first sanction of the HR 6600 or Ethiopia Stabilization and Peace and as well as Democracy Act bill was introduced on February 4, 2022, by co-sponsored by the two of U.S. congressmen. And if enacted, it authorized sanction against those who are perpetuating the conflict and suspended security, as well as financial assistance to the Ethiopian government. It also would also require the U.S. to oppose loans by international agencies, such as the World Aid Bank and International Monetary Fund to Ethiopia, as well as for Eritrea. And do you think this bill is relevant to the facts on the ground in Ethiopia? Well, I already discussed it. This bill and the bill in the Senate, which is more dangerous, they are designed to weaken Ethiopia. They are designed to continue to undermine the government of Ethiopia under the elected prime minister, Abiy Ahmed. They are, have nothing to do with peace and stability. If you look at what President Biden did under the advice of Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, he used a GOA, a trade agreement that would help the people of Ethiopia because it would give them favorite tariff agreements for their products coming into the United States. He used a GOA as a weapon. He kicked Ethiopia out of a GOA uh, last December. So this, there is enough that pushes more people into poverty. The more poverty you have, the more instability you have, the more you promote ethnicity, the more instability you have. If people are desperate, they will attack their fellow citizens to get the minimal uh, necessities of life to try to survive. The whole approach of the United States government, the president, the Secretary of State and the Congress. The entire approach is wrong. The sanctions are wrong. If we're really concerned about peace and stability in Ethiopia, then the United States would be promoting economic development, would be promoting the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, would be promoting more infrastructure in the country so that more people could find jobs and more people could live a prosperous life. So the, the intention has nothing to do with the title of this, these legislation. The intention is to undermine the government and undermine the prime minister. 
and make Ethiopia less governable, not more peaceful. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission criticized the first sanction of HR 66 deal Bill to have a negative impact on the ongoing investigation conducted by the UN Human Rights Office and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission into a late human rights violation of human rights, humanitarian and refugee law committed by all parties to the conflict in the Tigray, or Tigray region or northern part of the country. Do you agree with the statement or the stand of the Commission? The UN Human Rights Council voted that they're going to proceed with their investigation, which that means they're going to try to proceed. I believe the Ethiopian government is rejecting it. But what the UN Human Rights Council and what is called for in the two bills in the US Congress is they're saying we, the United States, or we, the international community, are not going to respect the sovereignty of Ethiopia. And instead, we are going to insert ourselves in your country and do what we want to do and investigate the way we want to investigate without the approval of the country. That is a violation of Ethiopian sovereignty. And that is what is being proposed. If these actions come about, then Ethiopia is no longer going to be a sovereign nation state. It will be under the control of the West. And that is the plans that the United States and the West have for Ethiopia. They want to make the prime minister malleable to their demands. And Chris Kuhn said it, you do it our way or else. And that's the, and that's the policy. Well, nowadays, some political commentators are criticizing the U.S. move, claiming that the bill has aimed at imposing political as well as military and economic sanctions under the cover of human rights violations, especially harms women and children strictly. And it wouldn't bring a positive solution to the country, they said. And what is your reflection upon this point? We're very disgusted. It is not designed to help Ethiopia. Sanctions hurt people. Sanctions kill people. Sanctions push people into poverty. The United States, a great country, my country, has been reduced to pathetic impotence because all we do is issue sanctions upon sanctions upon sanctions to countries all over the world and several countries in Africa. Sanctions are not a policy for peace. Sanctions are a policy for war. They're a policy to increase poverty. They're a policy to increase suffering. And this is well known and well documented. And therefore, uh, the government and the people of Ethiopia should understand that their very existence, their livelihoods, their stability is under attack by these, this legislation and by the United States government. In general, do you think that this uh, bill or the draft bills will impact the relationship between the United States of America and Ethiopia? My concern is that the Ethiopian government does not understand the full intentions of this geopolitical oligarchy, which is a faction in the United States government. They don't understand what the full long-term intent is. The intent is to weaken Ethiopia. The intent is to weaken the prime minister, either to remove him from office or weaken his government, promote ethnicity, bring in ethnic groups as co, uh, co-leaders of the government. And the question is, does the leadership of Ethiopia understand the long-term policy of this geopolitical faction. If they do, then what they have to think about is how do they reorganize their foreign policy and domestic policy to be able to move forward and progress under these attacks. The history of the United States has great moments, great periods of history where presidents used 
the best economic policy, that is one developed by Alexander Hamilton under George Washington to promote infrastructure, manufacturing, modernization of agriculture, we could help Ethiopia. It would be in the common interest of the United States to provide long-term credits for infrastructure development so that there'd be more jobs available. So we would increase the standard of living of Ethiopia so that we reduce poverty. This is the basis for the relationship of the United States and Ethiopia and for the relation of the United States to Africa and the rest of the world. We are not, no longer should be seen, seen as a unipolar, all powerful uh, a government. The world is made up of many countries and all of the interests of all of these countries should be taken into consideration in formulating U.S. foreign policy. Right now, U.S. foreign policy is governed by geopolitics. We have to be on top and everybody else has to be on the bottom. So we have a hostile relationship to China. We have a hostile relationship to Russia. We're developing a hostile relationship to Ethiopia and other countries. There is no reason for this hostility. There's no reason for the United States to think that it is the most powerful country in the world and therefore has to dictate policy. If we are the most powerful country in the world, then we can be generous and magnanimous and help other countries increase their standard of living and become more secure nations, sovereign nations around the world. Unfortunately, that's my policy right now, but not the policy of the U.S. government. Well, you already said the uh, SCT 199 draft bill sanction is more dangerous than the HR 6600 deal. What does Correct. that mean? Well, in the United States, we have resolutions which are passed by, it both has to be passed by both the House and the Senate and signed by the President. But a resolution is a recommendation. Uh, the S3199 is an act. Therefore, it's actual legislation. And if it's passed by this full Senate, which it hasn't, and then has to go to the House, and then it has to be signed by the President, then it becomes law. A resolution is advisory. An act or a bill is actual law. And 3199 is as harsh or harsher, but equivalent to HR 6600, but it would force the United States to become law. If you read the comments from Senator Coons, who's on that committee, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and who voted up the bill, he was very explicit. He said, if Ethiopia does what we want, this bill law will not progress, will not get voted on or passed. If Ethiopia doesn't do what we want, what we say, then we will bring it up to be passed and turned into law. Now, some people think that there's a disagreement between the presidency and the Congress on the question of Ethiopia. I do not think there's a disagreement. I don't think Chris Coons, who is the first envoy sent to Ethiopia uh, early last year on behalf of President Biden, would be taking these actions against Ethiopia and threatening Ethiopia if, in fact, Biden, the president, disapproved of them. So I, I think the Ethiopian government should understand the full implications of what the policy is coming from the United States Congress and the executive office and administration of President Joe Biden. Well, the bills has drawn condemnation from the Ethiopian government and supporters in the global diaspora, including the Ethiopian diaspora community living in different parts of the world. The Ethiopian American Public Affairs Committee, a number of diaspora organization, put the blame directly to the TPLA for attack, for starting the attack. And the organization also says that uh, the bill ignores millions in Amhara in Afro regions so, who were victims of the TPLF Act. The hashtag no more movement, a global peaceful movement, we affirm it that it is the standards unified against the HR 6600 and uh, S3199. 
7199 US aggression towards Ethiopia, Eritrea, and as well as Somalia. And this, this, this movement have been called the Ethiopian diaspora community to organize and mass release to across the globe in the protest in the HR6600 and the other one, the S3199 uh, draft bills under the motto, no more HR6600 and S3199. What is your reflection upon this? And for the future, what should be done to stop this uh, action? The e e Ethiopian diaspora organizations, the major ones, and I've been in touch and working with them, they have done a very good job on targeting the Congress and the Senate on these two pieces of legislation. And I, they should be commended for their energetic and diligent work on this. I believe the problem right now is that the Ethiopian government in the capital, Addis Ababa, does, is not responding sufficiently to these and other attacks. The government just simply refutes them, but that's not adequate. You have to, the government should be identifying the policy behind the US government's policy. The Addis Ababa government has not issued strong enough statements criticizing and identifying this geopolitical policy of the Biden administration. I think that they believe, some people in the government believe that maybe they could work with the State Department and work with President Biden and push the congressional legislation to one side. My view is they're all connected, that the legislation would not be proceeding without the support of the Biden administration. Uh, therefore, I think the diaspora groups have done well. I don't think the Ethiopian government has responded with sufficient insight and force to the attacks. And the Ethiopian government does not respond to all the media attacks against Ethiopia, which continue nonstop. I was in Addis Ababa for two weeks last year, as you know, and I tried to communicate some of these ideas. I'm not sure so far that people have absorbed them. Uh, I'm, off, I'm willing to collaborate, but I think that the government has to uh, improve its uh, understanding of how international politics works and the full intent behind the geopolitical establishment here in Washington and in Europe. And therefore, if they did, they could respond better. Good. For the future, what do you think should the Ethiopian government and people do to counter such unfair interference of the U.S. or the United States government in, in internal affairs of the country? First thing you have to do, you have to think of this as political warfare. The military fighting on the ground looks like it's coming to an end with the truce that was just established this past week. But this is political warfare. The first thing you have to do is understand your enemy. Who and why is Ethiopia, why is Ethiopia being attacked and who is attacking it? This is a crucial point in defining your policy to know who your enemy is and what is the motivation and intent of your enemy. Number two is this does not mean Ethiopia should not attempt to work with and continue a dialogue with the United States government. But at the same time, the Ethiopian government should be thinking about changes in realignment and formulate a strategy that's in the interest of the Ethiopian people. China is a reliable ally. Uh, India can be a real, as a reliable ally. Russia can be an ally. Of course, the conflict in Russia, Ukraine prevents that at the moment. There are other countries such as Turkey. There are countries inside Africa that Ethiopia has to rethink, how do we move forward in the best interest of our people? We're going to have the third filling of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam in a couple of months. That should lead to more electricity production. How do we generate the credit 
with our friends and allies to expand our railroad network, to expand our roads, to expand our light manufacturing industry, to give people more jobs. More jobs is the best way to fight insecurity. I was listening to a speech by the Prime Minister of Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Mr. Achi, and he was very clear that if the young people don't see a future, then they will be capable and susceptible to being pulled into violent extremist activity. Ethiopia is approaching 115 million people. Very large section are young people. If we don't provide economic opportunities for them, then these young people can be turned against the government. So Ethiopia has to think about what do we have to do in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years to develop our economy. The US at the moment is not interested in development. In fact, they oppose development in Africa. But that doesn't mean it won't change or it couldn't change. I'm trying to change it. But in the meantime, Ethiopia has to look for other allies around the world and on the continent who will support their inclusive development program for their people. We don't want to allow the Western governments to sabotage the progress that Ethiopia has made in its economic development over the last 10 years. That is primary. We have to move forward and continue to improve the economy and raise the standard of living of people and eliminate poverty. It's that poverty is the biggest killer in Africa. The lack of electricity is the biggest killer in Africa. And right now the West is blinded or too stupid to understand that this is where they could play a positive role in, the, in helping these countries build their infrastructure. But for the moment, that our government is not thinking clearly and therefore Ethiopia has to take the steps necessary to preserve and continue the development of their nation. Well, Professor Lawrence Freeman, I'm done with all my questions. And lastly, let me give the chance for you. If you have a general message for the people and government of Ethiopia on the current affairs of the country and many more, over to you. Well, I, as you can probably tell, I think differently than my government. I don't go along with public opinion or allow myself to be brainwashed by the media or propaganda. I have a much better understanding of Africa than most of the leaders in the United States government. And I would suggest that they be more thoughtful and consider the long-term harmful, destructive implications of this legislation. This will cause more harm, more instability, and potentially war if these sanctions are carried out. And I would suggest that the Ethiopian government look more seriously with more insight and understanding of what the U.S. policy is toward Ethiopia. Our goal should be to change the U.S. policy. Our goal should be to establish a mutual beneficial relationship between the United States and Ethiopia and the United States and Africa. That's what we have to work towards. But we have to be understand while we're pursuing that goal, who the people are who are out to stop this, who and why Ethiopia is under attack. And those are the things that I'm continuing trying to provide, an understanding of the physical economy and how to change it and improve it, and an understanding of this geopolitical strategy against Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa. And that's my contribution, and uh, hopefully it will be successful. Well, Professor Lawrence Freeman, thank you so much for your opinion and time. Thank you very much for having me and have a good day. Well, the viewers deal will bring us to the end of this uh, edition. I will come on the mobile hosting this program. Till the next edition, have a good time.